Runners like you and I know that one of the best ways to stay injury free is to make time for regular strength work. And today I've got a 12 minute workout you can do at home to help you stay strong and run injury free. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so I've got four exercises for you and we're doing three rounds, one minute of each exercise. Let's get straight into the workout. You need to be warm before you start this one, whether you just come back from a run or perhaps just do a little bit of five minute cardio beforehand. Either way, don't do it from cold. But we're starting out with split squats. So with these, it's not a movement where we're just shifting back and forth. I want you to focus on strict up and down movement bending both knees. Okay, now I'll show you this from a front on angle next time we do this, but we're doing 30 seconds of these split squats and then oh, swapping over, there we go. We'll do 30 seconds on the other side as well. So we're doing all of these for time, not for reps. Okay, obviously doing 30 seconds on one, 30 seconds on the other. We'll get to around about the same reps on each side if we keep a nice steady tempo. Now, with this, I really like a split squat because we're specifically working on strength, particularly with this front leg. Those quads are gonna burn, whilst also working mobility through the hip on the rear leg. Okay, that's 30 seconds. Next exercise is a side plank. Now, I really like a side plank, particularly for us runners, because of the way in which, as we land on one foot as we're running, there's a real tendency with all that lateral force or the uneven force through your body, a tendency for a lot of runners to collapse laterally. Now, this does a great job of just starting to strengthen the outside of key areas like those hips and obviously your core region in particular. Now, 30 seconds on one, and there's 30 seconds on the other. Be sure as you do this that you don't strain through your neck. You need to keep your head fairly neutral on your shoulders rather than craning your neck up or reaching forwards. Try not to allow your hips to roll in or roll out. We can just keep hips stacked one over the other. Okay, two, one, and then our next exercise is single leg toe touch. So standing on one leg, very simply touching big toe with opposite hand, slow, and controlled. We're looking to keep the knee fairly stiff as we do this and get most of the movement from your hips. Now, obviously as we're on one leg, there's a lot of balance involved here. Be, if you want, close to a wall, because that'll give you something to stabilize with. But I also like having the other hand, just to reach out and give yourself a little bit of control. Again, it allows you to counterbalance just that little bit. You'll feel your glutes working on that standing leg. And again, just like our split squats, I want to keep that standing knee facing forwards. From here, we're moving into our single leg bridge, keeping your heel fairly close to your butt. We don't want you out here. We're going to push down through the heel and lift your hips up into the air. Again, working through 30 seconds. All of these exercises, 30 seconds on one side, 30 seconds on the other. I've chosen a really hot day to do this in the studio. <laughs> I'm feeling hot and sweaty already. Hopefully, you've got a nice, pleasant place to do this. Now, as you push down through the heel, you'll feel those glutes start to engage a lot more than if you were to push down through the toes, the forefoot. The toes end up with you starting to actually feel like you're working through those quads a little bit more, whereas pushing through the heels is all about getting those glutes working. Okay, so we're back to the start. Split squats. Again, straight up and down. This second round, you're gonna feel a little bit more on your quads. Okay, it's a bit of compounded effort now. A little bit of residual fatigue creeping in. And as I mentioned earlier, I want to keep this front knee facing forwards the whole time. If you feel there's a tendency for the knee to drift inwards at all, then again, give yourself something to balance with. 
Other side. Here we go. Now, I mentioned earlier that I like this because of the hip mobilizing aspect with the rear leg. Now, with that, if you're feeling a bit of tightness down the front of the thigh, don't force the depth with these. Only go for the depth you can comfortably control. Okay, back into our side planks. 30 seconds of these. And this whole routine is a really nice little workout that post run you can start to do, perhaps before your cool down. I'm a big fan of getting you to do this kind of workout as a, a kind of a, a little and often type approach to run strengthening rather than, there we go, two, one, rather than needing to do an hour, 90 minutes, a couple of times a week, I'd much rather have you do this more like kind of 15 minutes, four or five times per week. Okay, really should be feeling this now through those obliques, through the kind of side of that core region as you look to hold your hips up nice and high. Okay, two, one, into our single leg toe touches. Oh, lost balance. Okay, good. Now, this second round certainly seems a little bit harder. Let me show you from a side on perspective. You can see from here, as I show you, side on, the most of the movement comes from the hips. Okay, trying to keep the back relatively straight and fold here at the hip region rather than turning it into a single leg squat. It's not that, it's far more of this pivot over the top of those hips. Okay, in two, single leg bridges. Okay, now, Beginning to feel those glutes a little bit more now, as I mentioned earlier, that compounded effect. Don't force the height of these. You may feel, particularly because of the way we're holding this knee, which helps fix the position of the pelvis or control the position of the pelvis, you may feel that if you go too high, you start to feel the, the, the effort in your low back. And that's not what we're after, that's not the idea. The idea is to really focus on the effort coming from those glutes, really feel it around the hip. If you do feel the effort come from your low back, then don't push anywhere near as high, okay? Allow yourself to come only up to maybe an inch less height than you had been going when you were feeling it in your back there. Okay, and back to our split squats. Last round, okay. Here we go. Slow and controlled form over everything else. I like this, I mentioned earlier, because of the way in which we're treating the two legs differently. It's just like when we're running, with every stride, one leg is flexing at the hip while the other is extending. And that's exactly what's happening here. It's a really good exercise that will actually allow you to increase your stride length as you run. Over time, as we improve strength and mobility around your hips, the stride length will naturally increase. And that's a big part of running faster. And who here doesn't, ultimately, want to be able to run faster for the same effort? Okay, two, one, and we'll change. Back to our side planks. Now, with these, thinking about the feet, we can either go with our feet in line or our feet stacked. Personally, I prefer this, but if you're gonna go in line, again, make sure that you don't compromise the position around the pelvis. You wanna keep hips stacked and you side on rather than rolled in 
or rolled out. Here we go again. Last 30 seconds of side planks. If you're doing this with me, let me know how you're getting on. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments. I doubt you can hear. I'm finding this hard work. It's really hot in here. Okay. Coming up to three, two, one. Single leg toe touches. Come on. Balance is not easy under fatigue. There we go. And this is just as important when we're running as it is when we're fatigued here as well. There's one thing being able to be controlled and strong and athletic when we're fresh, but under a little bit of duress, how well are you able to maintain that coordination, maintain that control? It's a big part of staying injury free. And that specifically is why I wanted to keep the tempo on this workout, get you working fairly hard from a cardio perspective and put a little bit of stress on the system so that you then have to do a good job of maintaining that control. Okay, last exercise. Hope you found this helpful. Hope you feel you found this a good workout. I certainly have. I know this is something that I need to keep making time for. Tagged on to the end of a good run. You can always find 10, 15 minutes before a cool down just to get a good quality strength workout in. Okay, last time on this side. Now, there are of course so many different exercises you could do. So, so many. There was a video that I actually put up on the channel um, a few weeks ago where I picked, if I could only do three exercises ever again, which would they be? And I'll leave a link at the end of this video so you can go and check that out because to my, in my mind, they are the three biggest bang for the buck exercises that us as runners could possibly do. So go and check that video out it's right over there. It'd be a great place for you to head on next. Let me know how you got on with this workout. If you found this helpful, hit the like button. And of course, if you're new around here, don't forget to subscribe as I'm here to help you run strong and run injury free. I'll see you in the next video.